incident took place in the Colonel's room. Sarah killed his first attack in the main room. She then fled into the bathroom. Then the killer ran after her. And they got into the bathroom. At that point, the killer had to try and bust down the door. Because Sayaka had locked it. And finally, the culprit had Sayaka cloned. To finish the job, they still came with the It was you, wasn't it, Makoto? I admit it. We already know the answer. That took place in the Kodo's room. Sarako was first attacked in the mix, she then got into the Then a killer ran. When they got into the back platform, the killer had to try and bust down the door because Sarako had run. You The reason my bathroom didn't open wasn't because it was locked. After all, the girls' rooms are the only ones with walk-in bathrooms, right? Yes, now that you mention it, that is true. Then why didn't your bathroom door open? Because it was stuck. Huh? What are you talking about? My bathroom door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. Monokuma over here can testify to that. Yep, true as true can be. But you know... You're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? But to have such a cruddy door... <laughs> That's not lucky at all! So the reason the door didn't open was just because it was stuck. But the killer didn't know that and assumed it was locked. So they tore apart the doorknob to get in. Okay, but then why would the killer even think the door was locked in the first place? Everyone should have known you can't lock any of the boys' bathrooms. The killer could easily make that mistake, thanks to one important detail about the scene of the crime. I got it! The killer must not have realized that it was my room. The culprit didn't even know where he was? That's inconceivable! And yet, he's absolutely right. See what? Well, to be more specific, what the killer didn't know was that Makoto and Sayaka had switched rooms, which is what led to the misunderstanding about the bathroom. If Sayaka had been in her own room, then... Then there would have been a lock on the door, and they would have had to break through! So they had no idea how unnecessary their actions were. Ultimately, we can't know if it came open by force or simply by accident. But, the killer must have been considerably confused, with no idea how they actually got the door opened. Regardless, it was a pointless act. Wasting time trying to break down a door that wasn't locked is... Definitely something I wouldn't do, since I would have known exactly why it wasn't opening. Right? That is a definite possibility. So the killer would have to be someone who didn't know they'd switched rooms? Then Makoto couldn't have done it. Okay, then who did do it? I'm sorry, but I give up! Quit without saving! But what happens if we can't decide on who we think did it? Well, why don't we just vote right now? Majority rules! Majority rules? You really think that's a good idea? Yeah, our necks are on the line here. Someone seriously needs to do something. For serious. Does no one have any other thoughts or questions? It does not matter how trivial they may seem. Oh, as a matter of fact, I do have one question. Oh, you... You don't gotta sound so disappointed. It's fine, it's fine. Just ask your question. Oh yeah. Okay, so... Well... I was just wondering... 
How did the culprit get into Makoto's room in the first place? Hmm, yes. How did the killer get inside? Maybe Sayaka just dropped the key somewhere and the culprit picked it up. That's possible, right? I don't think so. That seems way too convenient. Then... maybe someone picked the lock? Negative! If you remember, Monokuma made it quite clear that the locks are all unpickable. Fine. How about this? The killer got in the easy way. They could have knocked and said they wanted to talk or something, and Miss Maizono just let him in. No, that can't be it either. Oh, -ho! trying to argue against me? Sounds like someone doesn't know his place. Why exactly can't that be it? Sayaka was already scared, remember? That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. Knowing what she'd been through, I just can't believe she would have opened the door for anyone. What if her being scared was a lie? Huh? Well, what the hell is that supposed to mean? What? I know you don't want to consider it, but look at this and tell me, can you still deny the possibility? I found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. And these are the words that appear. Oh man! I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. When you write, you can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. When I saw that, I was like, holy crap! I better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. It's a pretty old-fashioned technique. But even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. Oh, and I should also mention, I found the notepad on the desk in Makoto's room. Which means, only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. Then either it was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka who switched rooms for a single night. So, Makoto, did you like this? No, I didn't. But of course you didn't. Because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature. Sayaka's signature. But why? Why would she write that? The note was likely her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. If you got an invitation like that from the ultimate pop sensation, what young man could resist? Of course, I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me! But can we be sure anyone even got this note? And honestly, even if they did, I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Huh? What makes you say that? <laughs> Would you like to hear what I have to say? Very well then. Pay <laughs>
Then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Nakato was staying in. So in other words, even if someone did read the note and did what it said, they would not have any connection to what happened. Hayaka and Nakato switch rooms, correct? But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, my room. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Nakato was No, stop! The nameplates on Mai and Sayaka's rooms got switched. They got... switched? That's right. The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. And the nameplate on Makoto's room had Sayaka's. So what you're saying is, the room Sayaka was staying in was actually marked as her room. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Plus, their rooms are right next to each other, so switching the nameplates would be no problem. And the one who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? Right? Okay, then who did it? Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. You can also infer as much from her note. She specifically tells the reader to check the nameplate. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. But why would she switch them in the first place? She wanted someone to come to the room she was in, and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. What? Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switched rooms. Why would anyone do that? To understand that, we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. That's where the answer lies. What happened then was... Probably... Whoever she invited over... Came in and... Attack- We figured it out! We know who did it! Whoever she invited over is the culprit! But we still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot! Sayaka fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Perhaps the answer to our previous question... Lies in that initial struggle. Yes. I think you're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? Oh yeah. What's the deal with that sword? Sayaka suggested I should hold on to it. I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. Seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. How the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? I got it! All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist, and it should become pretty clear. Right there where her wrist is all swollen. There's something glittery there. See? Is... is that gold? It sure is. Specifically, the gold coating from the replica sword. You barely have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. And there's some on her wrist because... I got her! Because she got hit with the sword! Right there on her wrist! 
I see, I see. And so the truth draws ever closer. All right, then it's about time to solve this mystery. started with the sword. Why not? Because the sword's sheath had been scratched. See? There's a dash in it. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Something sharp? You mean like the kitchen knife? That was the only sharp thing found at the scene. Stop jumping ahead. Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. But the sword was used first. There wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. If you are going to attack with the sword, you take it out of the sheath first, right? That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Okay, so how did the sheath get down? If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they got the sword as a defensive impulse. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. You're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife. Hmm, whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. I think I get it. So here's how it all played out. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere. Then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. So she grabbed the sword to defend herself. But then the culprit took that from her too. Then... After they broke her wrist with a sword, they took the knife and finished it. Sorry, but I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend herself. What? How the hell can you not think that? Because she never held the sword at all. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. Talk 
talking about her palms, right? The palms of her hands were perfectly clean, so I don't think she ever picked up the sword. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. In fact, if you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. It's safe to assume that's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Maybe she washed her hands after she had escaped into the bathroom. Sorry, but I don't think so. Why do you say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? No, that's not it at all. According to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. In other words, at night time. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at night time, right? Oh, I didn't know that. You're real different. You smell like a big fat ugly donkey. I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. An insult, obviously. So anyway, if Sayaka never touched the sword, then that means the killer is the only one who used the sword. But hold on. If that's right, then the one who damaged the sheet with the kitchen knife is... I got it! Sayaka? She had the kitchen knife? But we already said that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first, and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. And the one who attacked first was... Sayaka? Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. No, far from it. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. She took the knife from the kitchen then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation... These are all the actions of the sailors. Which brings up another point. Nakaku, Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms was so that she could pin the crime on you. That is a possibility, is it not? Sayaka wanted to... on me? That would also explain why she would switch the main place. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room where she was staying. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. But for that to work, the target had to be moved out while still keeping the room spot a secret. Target knew she had switched rooms. They would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Plus, she was the ultimate cop sensation. A totally forgettable kid, or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? What, then, you're saying she had this all planned out? Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. She launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attacking turn. That must be when her wrist got broken, and she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she planned to murder. Just hold on! That can't be true! Because... because... Hey! Hey! You guys have totally derailed the argument! You're being super boring right now! Decide who did it. Wouldn't it be awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time? Oh yeah, we got.
gotta decide who we think did it. Makoto, right now you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. If we can't uncover who murdered Sayaka, it's over for all of us. One clue left. Sayaka's dying message. Dying? Wait, wh what did you say? The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her. The number 11037. Written in her own blood. There must be a clue about the killer hidden in there. Well, before we get too far into that, I need to ask. Can we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? Her left index finger had blood on it. That could only be because she used that finger to write the message. I see. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Sure. I think we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But what the heck do those numbers mean? One... Hey, Chihiro. You're a computer nerd or whatever, right? You should know all about numbers and shit. No, that's not... Yes, I'm a programmer, but I don't see any kind of meaning in these numbers. Of course. It's because they're not numbers. Oh! Yeah, it looks like... What? What? No, it's just... A look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Don't these first two, one, one, look less like two numbers and more like one letter? Ah, oh, you're right. The connecting line is barely there, so I assumed it was 1-1, one, one, but... Looking at it now, you could also read it as an N. Whoa, you might have finally just said something worth a shit. <laughs> Rotate the image 180 degrees. Oh my god! Now I see! She wrote down the killer's name! Huh? He just shot past the clue card and right onto who did it! So, whose name did she write? Solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing 180 degrees. If you turn the message around, it becomes the letters L E O N. L E O N, or more accurately, Leon. What the hell are you talking about? It's just a coincidence. It's just a 
bunch of random squiggles that happen to look like my name. No, it's not random at all. She wrote that message on the wall behind her as she was leaning up against it. In that position, she couldn't move to write normally, and had to write upside down as it were. And as a result, when you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up getting quick. Try it for yourself if you want. Write something sitting like her, and the letters will be inverted. Yeah, that sounds like one hell of a stretch to me. I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like that. If you're not the killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Huh? You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of? I found laying on the ground by the incinerator, right? As the killer stabbed Sayaka, they must have gotten some of her blood on them. And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they like one piece burned off and both left behind. And the killer didn't notice. If they had, they most certainly would have killed. Isn't that right, Leon? This one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty. Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button. That, that's right! There are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. With just that one little charred piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough. But there are some other points that may reveal the truth. Are you finally starting to understand? The yeah. I think so. I got it! We look closely at how the shirt was disposed of. We should be able to figure out who the killer is. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're gonna say. You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on, either. You'd need the key to get in. And the one with the key was... the person on cleaning duty. So the killer had to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash! <laughs> Interesting. 